I'm Angela and welcome to our small cottage garden. We've lived here for five years now and I'm still learning how to create the perfect cottage garden. There has been a lot of success along the way but also some expensive mistakes. I'd still very much consider myself a beginner gardener but I thought I could share with you what I've learnt so far and reassure you that it's not as difficult as you may think. So let's jump in to step one of creating your own dreamy cottage style garden. First of all, we need to just ditch the assumption that you need to live in a thatched chocolate box cottage in order to have a cottage style garden. If you love this style, then it can be adapted to suit any era of home and any sized garden. It's just about using the key elements together and you'll achieve that romantic and whimsical look. In fact, I think this style of garden can also appeal to people like me who are a bit lazy. The beauty is that they are a bit messy and dishevelled, but also forgiving. I've even allowed some pretty weeds to stay because we don't need the garden to look too pristine. Remember, there are no rigid guidelines and a cottage garden is supposed to look like a relaxing place to be. What do you want? What do you want? <laughs> okay, guys, this is step two. What do you want from your garden? For me, my number one aim is to be able to have cut flowers throughout the warm months. There is nothing more satisfying than being able to cut flowers straight from your garden, pop them in a vase or jam jar and dot them around your home. In fact, our small garden usually produces enough to also give as gifts to friends and family and work colleagues. Giving and receiving flowers is always nice, but it feels extra special when you've grown them yourself. A simple mix of roses, cosmos, sweet peas and gypsophilia looks and smells wonderful. You can add and change your little bouquets as different parts of your cottage garden spring to life. You also need to think at this stage whether you want to stick to a colour theme. I used to think this seemed a bit too clinical but I have come to realise that I am more drawn to cool tones. Um, our house is decorated in cool tones and they're the colours that I tend to wear in clothes as well. So now if I'm plant shopping I stay clear of the reds, oranges and yellows and stick with more whites and creams, pinks, purples and blues. That way I find that the garden flows nicely. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not overly strict with colour. Sometimes a yellow flower will appear from nowhere and I certainly wouldn't tear it up screaming, you don't match, you've got to go. I just let it be for the bees and the insects to enjoy. So you'll be needing some inspiration at this point. I'd highly recommend Pinterest for ideas. I've been pinning for years and it really helps you to create a vision board for your garden. Once you've started gathering those pictures and ideas of how you'd like your garden to look, 
um, it's just so much easier then to implement those ideas into your garden. I also pick up books from charity shops or borrow them from the local library. But for me, the best source of inspiration was visiting open gardens. Our village usually organises a day in the summer where residents open up their gardens to the public in order to raise money for local charities. And it's a great source of inspiration just to see how other people have designed their gardens. You can ask them for their advice, learn some tips see how and what they've planted and to see what does well in their garden. So now we're at step three, shopping. My absolute favorite part. Shopping! I mean, if you don't love a trip to the garden center, what is oh, actually okay? wrong with you? Are you okay? But just hold on one minute. We are not, I repeat, we are not going to just scoop up anything that looks pretty because believe me as tempting as it is we are going to make some expensive mistakes we need to go with a list to keep us strong and resolute in our aim to buy the plants needed for our dream garden so if you are starting a cottage garden from scratch i'd suggest spending your money on perennials we're aiming for tall plants at the back, followed by medium and then small ones. And remember, if you have the room, try and cut new borders nice and deep. Ideally, we don't want any skinny borders in a cottage garden. Please do take note of the plant's information tag. It'll tell you where it likes to be positioned. I have made the mistake of planting them where I'd like them to be rather than where they'd like to be and it usually results in, sorry to sound dramatic, but death. <laughs> so you've chosen the plants you like in the colours that you like and for the right conditions, great. So get them planted, obviously follow the label and just sit back and watch them grow. If you are still feeling a bit stuck on where to start, I've jotted down a few ideas for you here. Remember, I'm still a novice gardener myself, but I don't think you can go far wrong with any of these plants. So happy shopping. So step four is slightly unconventional, I'll admit, and that is to accessorize your garden. By using things like bunting, wind chimes, quirky old ornaments, mismatched furniture, a vintage tablecloth, floral cushions or even a slightly rusty bench, they'll all add the cottagey garden character that you're trying to achieve. Remember, this garden style doesn't need to be pristine. Along with plants, garden pots are also very expensive. So if like me, you don't have an unlimited garden budget, try to think creatively I look out for unusual things that I could use as planters and recently found this old jam pan in a charity shop for just £6. I drilled some holes in the base and filled it up with plants that were on offer at B&M.
think it looks pretty good and hopefully it'll be a success. If not, it wasn't too expensive and I can always try using it for something else. Although I'm not sure what I could do with it as it's now got holes all in the bottom. Oh well. And now step five is time to enjoy. Is your garden perfect yet? Well, no, and neither is mine, but it doesn't stop me enjoying it completely. There will be challenges ahead with your garden and there'll certainly be times when you want to give up. Your hosta will get eaten by slugs and your rose will get black spot, but I promise it will be worth it in the end. Some years will be better than others, but your garden will grow along with your knowledge and before you know it, you'll have your perfect cottage garden. Life can be really tough sometimes and I hope your garden can bring you some peace and joy as mine does to me. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video useful in any way, please do hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. As we carry on into spring and the summer, I hope to share more of our cottage garden here at Hideaway Cottage.